Hello sa inyo mga kapwa ko pagsuwenyo. So, nandito na naman tayo sa isang episode para sa ating methods of research. At para sa araw na ito, pag-uusapan natin ang preliminary pages. So, bakit nga ba merong preliminary pages at ano ito? So, for sure, kayo po ay nakapasa na sa inyong mga title defenses. And with that, kailangan masimulan na natin ang inyong mga preliminary pages. So, ito yung tinutukoy natin nasa unahan ng inyong thesis, narrative, CVP, or ng inyong mga researches. So, let's begin. Your first page will begin with this title page. On the topmost, dapat nandiyan yung approved title nyo. So, for our university, what you have to do is to make it all caps and then inverted pyramid. Ibig sabihin, naka ganun siya. So, para siyang funnel, naka-invert. Longest, and then, you will have the shorter and the shortest. So, you can have your title divided into two lines or three lines. Kung kaya ng iba, bakit hindi? Pero mas maganda kung ang title mo ay nakasaglod within 17 to 20 words only. Then, afterwards, we have the single spaces. Next is the submission statement. Ano nga ba ang ginagawa mo? Is this a research? Is this an undergraduate thesis? Or is it an EDP or yung tinatawag natin Enterprise Development Project. Is it a narrative report? So, whatever it is, yun ang nasa kaunahang line ng inyong submission statement. Next to that would be submitted to the faculty of the and that would be the words that would be written there. Then the third line would be either the college or the department where you are situated at. Then, the fourth would be the name of our university. Okay, so do not include the campus there, just the name of our university. So, bakit? Bakit hindi kailangan isama ang ating campus? Because on the fifth line, sa ikalimang linya, doon nyo po ilalagay ang location ng inyong school. So, kung ang nakalagay dyan ay yung ating main campus, yung address ng ating main campus. However, just include it with only the town and also the province. Next is the degree statement. So, sa degree statement natin, unang linya, impartial fulfillment. Second line, of the requirements for the degree. Walang kama, okay, huwag kakalimutan. At yung pagkakasabi ng of the requirements, yung of, small letter lamang, yung O. Then afterwards, the third line would be the Bachelor of Arts in Bachelor of Secondary Education, Bachelor of Science, so, yun na yung degree. Then, single spaces again, before you put the author name, the author's name. In all caps. And, after that, would be the month and year of expected completion. Pwede na rin graduation. Okay. So, kaya-kaya na gawin agad yun kasi meron ka ng approved title, di ba? Second would be the approval sheet. So, ito, hindi naman to agad gagawin. Pero, pwede nyo nang i-prepare. Mas maagang preparation, walang hassle sa dulo, di ba? So, let's begin with the letterhead of the university. Next would be the department or the name of the college. To be followed by the author. So, just do not forget, meron tayong mga, mga technical rules or regulations when it comes to writing this, you can always check your research manual. Then after the author or authors, you will put again the proposed study title or the approved title. Do not forget, kung sa unang page, siya ay naka-inverted pyramid, pagdating sa approval sheet, still ang title mo ay inverted pyramid. Then write the words approved in all caps. Take note, there are spaces between the letters A, B, B, R, O, B, E, T. May space kada letter. Then the signatories will be your advisor, your technical critic, the department chairperson, the college or campus research coordinator, and the college dean, or for the others, you have the campus administrator. So yan ang contents ng ating approval sheet. Third page. The third will be the biographical data. So, yung biographical data, it tells about yourself. It, tells, it talks about the author. So, 
sino ba si author? So, dito sa biographical data, makikita natin kung sino si author. So, it is a one-page presentation of the author's personal information. First paragraph, include their name, address, birth date, birthplace, parents, and siblings. Okay, however, just be careful. Do not include your complete address here. Mas maganda yung town and province. Yun na rin po ang nilang doon. Tapos yung iba medyo critical pagdating sa birthday nila. Hindi nila nilalagay yung year kasi baka daw mahulaan yung kanilang, yung kanilang age. At medyo magiging conscious sila. So if you don't want to put your year, it's okay po. Just do not forget yung inyong mga prepositions such as in, on, at. Okay. Then the second paragraph will be about your elementary education. So saan ka nga ba nag-take ng elementary sa iba yung elementary nila, diretsyo then hanggang high school. So, kung diretsyo, you can combine them in one paragraph. Then, you can also put also the year, kung kailan ka graduate ng elementary, kailan ka graduate ng high school, and if there are some significant, remember the word, significant awards that you had, you can actually put them there. Pero, wag nyo lang isama yung mga hindi significant like best in penmanship, um, best in, let's say, reading, ganyan. Unless related siya sa current degree niya ngayon. Okay, and then the next would be the college education. Of course, you might be staying here, the campus where you are enrolled, or if you are a transferee from another university, you can mention that in this part. And then what would be your organization, student organizations, and if you're a member of other extracurricular organizations, pwede nyo ilagay dyan. And if you became an officer, sunan nyo lang because, again, this page is all about you as the author. And then the last line or the last sentence would be, she obtained her degree in month the year. So, syempre, kung hindi naman she, I think he, he obtained his degree in month, then the year. So, that's already the third part. Let's proceed to the fourth. The fourth would be the acknowledgement. So, ngayon na nagsisimula pa lang kayo sa thesis nyo or sa study nyo, you can just reserve the acknowledgement. Pero dapat, alam nyo na kung anong mga ilalagay sa acknowledgement. So, this would be the opening or introductory statement. You will provide your words of gratitude to the thesis advisor, technical critic, department research coordinator, department chairperson, college or campus research coordinator, the campus administrator, or the college dean. And that would be in order. Kung paano nakalagay dyan, ganun nyo rin sila pasasalamatan. And then, bakit nyo nga ba sila pinapasalamatan? So, you have to mention the name, comma, the position, for example, technical critic, comma, and then bakit. So, the reason why you are giving that kind of gratitude to that person. So, um, just do not forget yung ating mga grammatical structures. At kinakailangan, masindan pa rin natin yung technical aspect na nandun sa ating research manual. And then, you can also provide the words of thanks for financial assistance, scholarship, those from outside the department or maybe your college friends, classmates, and relatives. Pwede nyo ilagay dyan. Okay. So, merong iba na sasabi, Mom, pwede ba ilagay namin ang boyfriend namin or girlfriend namin? Okay lang. Pwede naman po. Because that would be a bit personal na gusto niyong pasalamatan. So, again, that is your page and you would like to provide gratitude dun sa mga taong nakatulong sa iyo. Pero, medyo huwag naman mong isama yung mga pangalan ng mga tropa. For example, um, to all the tropang gala, ha? Yun, pwede na isama yun. So, you can just mention the names. Okay. And then, when it comes to your special someone, huwag niya nang lagyan na to my babe, my one and only, the love of my life. Okay, remember, this is a formal output. You don't have to be very creative or very mushy on this part. Next is the abstract. The abstract is actually the last to be written when it comes to your thesis. 
So, bakit nga ba siya last na written? Kasi summary siya. So, the abstract is the summary of your research. So, it contains the bibliographic information of your study, the time and place, the objectives, the research design and methodology, the significant findings, conclusions, and at times, if it will be permitted, the recommendations. Pero take note, again, hindi nyo yan magagawa while you are conducting the study. Magagawa nyo lang yan only after you have done your study. Then of course, we proceed to the table of contents. The table of contents, as is na po yan, standard po yan, you have to follow the spacing. The space before the page number, okay, and then also the single spacing. Alin ang nakahanging indent? Kailangan po ay masundan po ninyo yan. Okay, so the table of contents lists the chapter titles, first and second level headings, ibig sabihin, meron siyang hanging indentions. Okay? And then the pages where the parts are actually located. So, ayan, makikita nyo from the introduction to the review of related literature, methodology, results, and discussion. Then the last chapter, which is the summary, conclusions, and recommendations. Then there would be an addition of references and the appendices. Then, as part of your research, you have the list of your tables. Okay, just do not forget that when you are writing the title of your tables, we follow the sentence case. Ibig sabihin, yung first letter lang ng unang word ang nakakapital. Unless, meron mga proper nouns na nandun sa table. But the rest, if they are common nouns, syempre, small letters lang sila. Then, the, we have the list of figures. So, ganun din sa ating list of figures, sentence case. Okay? So, andyan na, visually, makikita nyo na siya. Dapat kung ganyan ang nakikita nyo sa, sa samples that we have, ganun din ang nakikita natin sa inyong paper. Then, we have the list of appendix tables, only if applicable. Then, the list of appendix figures. So, at times, we are actually having a documentation when it comes to your study when you are gathering data, you are taking pictures when you are when you are going to certain places for the conduct of your study, like to take time and documentation or ng pictures for that. Okay, so yon, pwede natin ilagay sa ating list of appendix figures. So still, even for this one, naka sentence case pa rin tayo. And of course, do not forget you still have your list of appendices. For some, they would be in their Appendix 1 with their curriculum vitae. Then, the Appendix 2 would be the Research Instrument. And then, the Appendix 3 would be the SPSS output, especially for quantitative studies. Okay, but you can just ask your advisor as to what would be the arrangement of your appendices. Still, sentence case. And sa ating next episode, iisa-isahin naman natin ang 5 parts of the research paper at magsisimula tayo doon sa chapter 1 which is the introduction. So I hope you learned something from me discussing the preliminary pages of our paper. So just do not forget, when you are at last, just take a look at your research manual. And this is me, Abigail, saying, Research is not easy, but with the help of our advisors and technical critics, you can push this and be successful. Bye!